Thank you very much. Thank you. Please. Yes. Thank you. Uh, firstly, I, I must tell you all, uh, this is going to be the beginning of really the business session. Our, our first part was really about product and what's ahead for that. But I want to make a special comment about, I mentioned it two nights ago when many of you got here, about my dear friend Simon. Uh, I kind of was kidding as I said it the other night, but I mean it in all seriousness. Within this last month, Simon was with me at a farm in Virginia and came off a horse as we were going up a, a hill. And he fell probably, probably 10 feet on his back uh, and cracked eight, eight ribs. Uh, and it was, uh, he was there at the hospital overnight, but I just, I am amazed at all the things he can do and him being on stage. And even this morning, wasn't he funny uh, helping? But a big round for Simon Hemus. Well, where is Simon? Where is he? Oh, I can get you a better seat uh, in the place, but Simon, my best to you. One of the great collateral benefits of this company, you know, people talk about, yes, the income, very importantly, that we grow from the person we are to the person we could become, but there's a very important collateral benefit that we hear from you when we interview you, regardless of the country, and it's the relationships that we develop. Uh, Simon and I have been dearest friends for more than 30 years and worked together all over the world. And anybody who has ever served in the military know you kind of get a band of brothers when you fight the fight together. But I can say the same thing if I'm talking about leadership in Tupperware and a big distributorship because of what you go through together. It not only grows up, but you grow together more as one. Uh, and relationships matter so much. It is the soul of our company. And make sure you take enough time to appreciate those things. Now, I'm not going to give a presentation right now. I come a little bit later, but I want to set up this morning on now what we're really going to talk about. We created uh, an initiative three years ago called the 2020 Team, and these were the pillars of that. First, strengthen our core business. That's today. Two, how do we take the business to the next level to extend our penetration, to extend our reach. And then there's this underlying principle, our real purpose, which is really focused on waking sleeping giants inside of people. We call it chain of confidence uh, and specific focus is on women, but you'll notice more and more that when we have powerful distributorships where the woman is the sales leader, you also have powerful, supportive spouses uh, in the business. And by the way, if we don't do it another time, let's give a round of applause for all spouses, if we may. Okay? So, So you're going to hear, really, we're going to, uh, you're going to hear about IROAR, which is the today of our, bu our business. In just a moment, I'm going to introduce Alan Dando and Asha Gupta. I'm going to then take the uh, extend our reach, and then you're really going to hear from, from Nikki and Tricia, from Susan and Eleanor, 
more about leveraging our purpose. So we have a, a very packed morning for you. Uh, importantly, I want to show you quickly, this is the 2020 vision team. Now, one of the reasons I have so much confidence in where we're going in the future is, let me mention, let me mention the eclectic mix of the people involved in this team Many companies, when they're trying to create or craft a strategy for the future, they call on some consulting firms. McKinsey, Bain, Boston Consulting Group, one of those. By the way, Avon, and because I spent some years there and I'm so sad what's happened with Avon, uh, because I learned so much there, as did Simon. They have had every major consulting firm in the world in telling them what to do. People who did not know that business. And that's why Avon is a shadow of what they were. We don't use consulting firms. We use people who are leadership people in our business. And to give you an idea, as I go through this team, almost every one of these people are here, but if I went through the country of birth of the majority of these, you will start to really see how different. Luciano Wasum, Argentine, okay? Okay. Okay, okay. Right. No tengo suficiente tiempo para Songs and cheers, okay? Gracias. <laughs> so, Brazil, settle down, okay? Because I'm gonna mention Paula, okay? Recognition was last night. Today is learning, okay? Alan Dando Zip was Zimbabwe, but South Africa. Nikki Decker, United States, our token American. Christian Dorner, Germany. Steinova Fena, Norway. Luciano Garcia, Mexico. Asha Gupta, India. Justin Hewitt, South Africa. George Jaggi, actually a Luxemburger. There are only 12 in the world and he's one of the 12. <laughs> Paola Kiwi, Chile, Chile. Uh, next, Vincent Liang, China. Nining Purnama, Indonesia. <laughs> Eleanor Steele. Yeah, thank you for containing yourself. Okay. <laughs> Eleanor Steele, Estados Unidos, USA. Trisha Stitzel, USA. Michael Chalice, we're not sure. <laughs> Is he Greek or? German, or Austrian, or Italian, or Malaysian, or Indian, uh, or now French. All is misclade in Michael, uh, but, but anyway. Louis Victoria, Puerto Rico. I mean, you, you, Aiden Yilmaz, Turkey. Do you see? Big hand now. Now, now it's okay. Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So I want you to have confidence that the strategies we're working on are really crafted by us. You, you and me did this, not some outside firm. People who have lived and worked all over the world. And so understand this business. Now, how did we do it? We meet twice a year. For, we meet for four or five days at a time. And during these meetings, we spend 40 hours in four days working. But we also have fun together and we take the business apart 
and put it back together again. Is what we produce perfect? No. As a matter of fact, there really is no true north. I was eventually a navigator in the Navy, and if you take magnetic compass variation, it's hard to even ever find true north, but we know our direction is at least up here, up here. And that's why I am so appreciative of those long-serving distributors who together, as we have gone through this journey, sometimes doing everything right, sometimes making mistakes, but always trying to move forward, that we have kept this we partnership together. It matters. Now, I'm gonna turn this next section over to Alan Dando and Asha Gupta, but let, let me mention just the incredible backgrounds of our people. Uh, Alan was, uh, was raised what used to be called Zimbabwe, uh, and it, it is amazing. I kidded sometimes with him on this, but it's not a kidding matter. Uh, that country with the wrong leadership has been ruined in 30 years. 30 years ago, the country of his birth was the safest place in Africa. Beautiful tree-lined cities. They ran all the farmers out, ran all the stability out. Their currency isn't worth anything. He and his wife, Anne, started there as distributors. She was the one that brought him in Tupperware. And they left with single dollar bills packed in luggage inside their car to start over again in South Africa. And then they built a distributorship. He took over the Tupperware business, took over all of Southern Africa. And both businesses started to grow. And now he is the head of Europe, Africa, in the Middle East, great experience. But Asha Gupta, I never will forget when I first met her, she was in her 20s. She really started in our business in India on the sales side of the business and then moved into marketing. And then the very unlikely move, we moved her to the Nordics, to Copenhagen where she had marketing for all of the Nordics. And I remember meeting her in 2004 at an important meeting in Kinsale, Ireland. And I left that meeting and I said, she is smart. Within a short time, she was the head of India and India started to grow. Soon later, a portfolio and now group president of all of Asia Pacific. They're gonna take you through the IROR strategy and they are co-creators of it. A big round of applause for Asha and Alan Dando. Am I supposed to keep my All right. Thank you, Rick. Morning, good Asha. morning, everybody. Morning, everybody. And good morning, Alan. Good morning, Asha. Good morning to you. We've had a very exciting morning, isn't it? There's a lot of fun, excitement, and um, energy because we talked about products, and of course, our chairman uh, has also set the tone. Alan and I are here today to dig a little bit deeper into iRoar and really about what makes our business function. How do we become more successful today, even as we begin to think about our tomorrow? So it's important to, as they say, seize the day and plan our future now. So IROR is really all about strengthening the core of our business. And we've been talking about IROR now for these two to three years, so I know each one of you is familiar with recruiting, onboarding, 
activating and retention which allows us to dramatically expand our sales force size. And as a Vision 2020 team, we've set that bar and we said we'd like to have 5 million sales force by 2020 and really expand the sales force. And this is where you come in to really develop the fear. The strategies of our Vision 2020 team are really aimed at making us way more reachable in the markets that we operate and extremely relevant to our consumers, to our hosts, and to our sales force. So that's what IROR is all about. In fact, when I was looking at the product demonstration, Alan, this morning, yeah. and all the excitement around, whoa, MicroPro and everything else, the thought that kept coming back to my mind is, what good is a great product, a shiny new car, if the engine is slow? If the engine doesn't have the horsepower to really drive fast, what good is a car? Now, great products without the engine are pretty much like that. What good are they if you don't have the sales force, the leadership to take it to the hosts and consumers? This is really the key part of what we're now focused on in IROR. Alan. So, thank you, Asha. What we want to do this morning is to try and give you like a roadmap to make sense of what we mean by IROR. And the first thing that we're going to talk about on the three points that Asha mentioned is strengthening our core. And what do we mean by strengthening our core? Strengthening our core, the core of our business, is all about selling fundamentals. It's the basics of our business. It's the fundamental things that we do in our business each and every day. But more importantly, when we talk about fundamentals and selling fundamentals, we must use the word relationships. Because whether you are in a beauty business or whether you are in a Tupperware business, relationships are what drives the success of our sales force. So we talk about selling fundamentals that are based on relationships. And that's very important for us, as we all know. So what are we trying to do here today? I'll tell you what we're trying to do is give you an insight into IROR so that you can leave here with a good understanding of what we as a company are trying to do with this concept, this initiative of IROR. This room today is filled with very, very successful people. And it's about your success that we want to focus on. You're already very successful, but what can IROR do for us and do for you? I'll tell you, there are three things that IROR can do. You are already successful, but through IROR, we can make you even more successful than you are now. The second thing that IROR can do is to make sure that you continue to be successful into the future. And that's very, very important. It's important to us as your company, it should be important to you. So that even though you are successful now, we want you to be successful the month after, and the month after, and the year after, and that you continue to grow and to grow and to grow. That's the real measure of success in our Tupperware businesses and in our beauty businesses, that you continue to grow, and IROR will do this for you. And the third thing that we want is we want everybody else in our Tupperware brands business to learn from you. We want everybody else to be as successful as you already are. So those three things are what IROR is about. We want to create the success, we want to extend the success, and we want everybody to be as successful as you. Now, we operate in 
just over 85 different countries. Wow. Asha, that's a lot, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. 85 countries, and we have seven different brands. So you are bound to get differences in how people operate from country to country. You are bound to see differences in how people operate in our business, even within a single distributorship, from manager to manager, or from team leader to team leader, you're going to see differences. We understand those differences. We acknowledge that there are differences, and we actually don't mind if there are differences. We respect that there should be some differences. But I tell you what we needed to do. Because we want everybody to understand how you became successful, we needed to find a system, a method, we, we, we were searching for, let's call it a formula that we could take with your incredible success and share that with everybody else. That's what IROW is about. We wanted to find a method of sharing your incredible success with the rest of the Tupperware brand's world. Really, that's what IROW is about. So learning from you, and we have learned from you, we have an understanding from your success of what works. We have an understanding from your success of your habits, of the repetition that you go through, of the attitudes that you have, that you exhibit. We understand what makes you successful. We have taken this all from you. Now, we have always shared what we call best practices. In other words, we've taken the good information that we've got from you and we've shared it with the rest of the world. But we haven't always done a good job with that. We must confess. We haven't always taken those best practices and shared them in a way that, for example, is simple. We haven't taken those best practices and shared them in a way that is perhaps consistent. And we certainly haven't taken them from time to time and shared them in a way that is what we call scalable. And by scalable, what we mean by that is something that is a systematic approach. So I don't want to be too complicated, but what we need to do with your best practices is to be able to share this in a simple way. We want to make it consistent for people we want to make it scalable so that it becomes systematic. That's what we wanted. And this is what iRAW is all about. It's about sharing your best practices. It's about taking what you do with your incredible success and sharing it in a systematic way, a consistent way with the rest of your colleagues. That's what IROW is. Now, in 2016, we have a big year ahead of us. And Asha and I both know this, and Tricia, as the uh, group presidents, we know we have a big year ahead of us because we're going to be rolling out these initiatives across Tupperware brands. We're going to be rolling out these best practices and initiatives that we've defined. Every market across the world all the Tupperware brands markets will be focusing on at least one of these initiatives. In your market, it may well be success formulas. It may be onboarding. It depends on what has been chosen and is being rolled out in your market. But one of each of these success formulas will be rolling out into your market. And what we want to do now, this morning, what Asha and I are going to do, is explain to you what these initiatives mean and what onboarding success formulas and the other initiatives actually mean, and explain to you how they will actually grow your business. Right, Alan. And as Alan explained, the IROR, as it's broken down, we identified eight initiatives that can help us expand our sales force. And 
The three that we've picked up this morning are, I think, the most vital because if you start to work with these initiatives, it's almost guaranteed that you will have success. As Rick rightly mentioned, let's start by working with what we have today in our hands. Now, onboarding, success formulas, and group demonstration selling are the three important ones that we're going to talk about this morning. So let's start with onboarding. Now, all of you, as Alan mentioned, are extremely successful distributors. And many of you are here every time there's a chairman's summit your successful number ones in your own market, or your top 10 distributors. Now, what makes you successful? Let's go back to the time when you started in this business, many, many years ago for some of you. If you remember that time, as a new demonstrator coming into the business, did you know that you were going to be here today? But there must be something that happened with you in those early days when you started that went right for you that built up your confidence, the trainings that you picked up, that allowed you to progress week on week. In fact, in the onboarding program, we almost say that if you get past 13 weeks of successful implementation of those success behaviors as a new consultant, you have a really good start. So onboarding is something we've all been doing for many years. But as Alan mentioned, what's been different is it's been done differently in different parts of the world. But today, as a Vision 2020 group, we were able to distill those success behaviors into, let's call it like a capsule, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, and today we can make that a much more repetitive, easy to understand, as you say, simple, and something that you can work consistently with and pass on uh, in your distributorships to your new consultants. So as distributors, the first thing really is to make sure that we take the onboarding program as our key success program. After all, you have a new consultant who starts up well, she is going to be your future manager, your future top leader. And we recruit a lot of people into the company, but the retention can be vastly improved. Now, in the pilot markets that we work with the onboarding program, we've seen tremendous success. And I want to share with you the case of two markets, Germany, who's here with us today, and also Brazil, who started to work with the onboarding program, and they started to see expanded results. Now, Germany started to notice as the onboarding program was implemented with a new consultant coming into the business, they started to achieve better activity, much better activity as you can see witnessed here. And their sales also started to improve as they went through the onboarding program. So today, in Germany, the onboarding program has set in and has been adopted as a success system by all the distributors. So really, congratulations, Germany, on driving that. Now, in Brazil, who's also been working with the program, of course, we all saw the success of Brazil yesterday. I don't need to illustrate that more because we saw them on stage. <laughs> with all the success, and they've been working not just on the onboarding program, but on many success initiatives from Vision 2020, and we see that the new consultants who are starting in the business improve not just their activity and their sales, but the key thing there is retention. So even after the 13-week program, we see new consultants actually stay back in the business and really continue to do well. Now, these are early results, and we are continuing to work, and that's why now that we've tested the program, we know that it's something that can be actually cascaded into all the markets. Now, the best proof of hearing uh, about the success is just not looking at figures, but really actually looking and listening to some of our people, our distributors, who've done this and been successful at it. So I want to introduce today to you our German distributors. Now, uh, uh, Sarah Simon is actually a distributor who's a millennial distributor, and she is someone who actually started in the business when she was just 21 years old, right? 21 years old, in five years, Sarah becomes a distributor. She is today one of Germany's most successful distributors, and she's growing her business in leaps and bounds. And last year, as the onboarding program was implemented, she took that on board. And let's hear from her, her success. Let's watch this video, please. 
Einarbeitungskonzept hat uns sehr geholfen. Unsere neuen Partymanager haben Woche für Woche den Fokus auf ihre klaren Ziele, die sie eben weiterhin verfolgen können. Auch für unsere Teammanager ist das eine tolle Sache, denn die Teammanager wachsen einfach viel dichter zusammen, dadurch, dass das für alle ein ganz, ganz erfolgreiches Einarbeitungskonzept ist, denn auch die Teammanager profitieren ja von den Neuen. Die Einstellung der jungen Partymanager hat sich extrem verbessert, denn sie fühlen sich von Anfang an gleich der Tupperware Familie zugehörig, weil sie jede Woche an die Hand genommen werden und ganz klar eben mit unterstützt werden. Die Teammanager hatte ich ganz schnell mit im Boot, denn die Teammanager haben sofort gemerkt, wie profitabel es für sie ist und wie schön es ist, dass ihre Partymanager klare Ziele vor Augen haben und damit einfach viel besser im Geschäft wachsen können. Wir rekrutieren in unserer Bezirkshandlung sehr viel und deswegen kann ich nur sagen, mit dem neuen Einarbeitungskonzept hat es uns absolut nach vorne gebracht. Sie starten viel schneller ins Geschäft, ich habe eine festere Bindung zu ihnen, es entstehen wahnsinnig viele Freundschaften und deswegen kann ich nur empfehlen, macht mit! Congratulations, Sarah. Uh, Sarah is in our midst. May I, may I request Sarah Simon to please stand up so we can applaud for you? Where's Sarah? There she is. Congratulations. I must just share with you that Stefan and Sarah were at my dinner table last night and they shared with me she had 100% unit manager activity last week. Wow. Every single one of her managers was selling Tupperware, 100%. I just had to share that with you. There you go. Success, that speaks for itself. Congratulations, Sarah and Tupperware Germany. Let's now go to uh, hearing from another distributor, and she is from Brazil. And uh, this is uh, Maria, Maria Eugenia Caneda, is again a very successful distributor. And her business, her daughter is also a distributor with, uh, with Tupperware, and what's amazing with her story is that the business continues to grow leaps and bounds. All her key indicators are up, and she's been working with the uh, onboarding program. And let's watch this video and hear it from her. Well, the program Integrando Corações is a program that was developed for a new consultora. Porque nós temos muitas promoções e para ela que está entrando agora, ela precisa é, é, ter uma informação certa, simples. E o Integrando Corações é, um, é o foco que ela vai dar no negócio. Então a líder empreendedora, juntamente com a distribuição, é, fazemos esse contato, é, criando essa, essa confiança, esse relacionamento, para que ela desenvolva no nosso negócio e que ela queira mais. Bom, o programa Integrando Corações, quando nós lançamos, foi uma mudança né, de comportamento e foi uma, uma mudança de consciência. E tivemos todo o apoio da companhia, né, tivemos é, um evento especial para lançamento do Integrando Corações. Foi um momento muito mágico e onde todas as nossas líderes puderam é, entender e comprar essa ideia né, de aplicar. E tem dado muito certo. Nós temos hoje é, novas consultoras é, felizes, ganhando mais, se tornando estrelas dealer e ainda com projeção de crescimento. Bom, o programa Integrando Corações impactou fortemente, positivamente no, no, no meu negócio. Por quê? Porque através das novas consultoras treinadas e integradas, é, trouxe base, trouxe fortalecimento a cada vitrine de mais vendas, mais recrutamentos e mais nomeações. E se você ainda não aplica o Integrando Corações, o meu conselho é, comece já. Porque este programa é um programa que vai fomentar, que vai fazer a diferença para as novas consultoras. Porque esse programa, ele é de fácil entendimento, de fácil abertura para a nova consultora, para que a gente possa dar o treinamento, o acompanhamento. E isso gera crescimento, principalmente para a pessoa que está entrando, para a líder e para, e para, para a empresária, para o distribuidor. E tenho certeza que todo esse tempo investido por você, você vai ter retorno. So, Maria, where are you? Maria, can I have you to stand up, please? Woo! Give Maria a big hand! Bravo!
Wow, that's what you call success. You know, just to make this perfectly clear in your minds, onboarding that Usher has taken you through deals with the first perhaps three months of the new consultant's career while she is in Tupperware, when she joins us. It's the beginning stages for the new demonstrator or consultant. That's what onboarding is. It's the introduction to Tupperware's success, the first three months. The next initiative that we're going to look at, success formulas, deals with the period after the new demonstrator has joined us. She has gone through the onboarding process. It may well be a new manager that we're talking about when we're talking about success formulas, or even someone who's established in your business. She's an established manager, and this may be still quite new to her. So this is after the onboarding process. It's the success formulas that we want to introduce people to after they become familiar with our business in the onboarding program, and it's to teach them how to be successful. The success formulas really focus the new consultant or the new manager on those activities that make her successful. That's what success formulas are all about. And I mentioned earlier on when Asha and I were introducing these topics that we learned this from you. These are your best practices. This is what you have been teaching your people to do. These are what the success formulas simply are. They are the activities that you have developed over time to make sure that somebody in your business not only becomes successful, but is able to achieve the highest earnings that they can possibly achieve as a demonstrator or as a manager, so that they can fulfill their earning opportunity. Now, you all have successful top consultants or demonstrators or beauty advisors in your business. You all have top managers in your business. You all have top team leaders. And I want you to think for just a moment about these top people. These are the best of your people inside your distributorships or inside your areas. We're talking about the very top people. If you look closely at what your top people are doing, I'm pretty certain that you're going to find that these top people have certain activities that they do on a regular basis which make them successful. These are the activities that they have learned perhaps from you that they do with consistency week after week and month after month. You will find that these top people have developed their own formula for success. They actually have a success formula. We just haven't vocalized it. If you look at the activities and think about what they are actually doing, you'll come to this conclusion. They've developed a success formula which they repeat consistently. Consistency. That's exactly what they do. I want to give you an example. A top manager inside your business, a top unit manager, or a top person in one of our beauty businesses. In order for her to be successful, she knows what activities she needs to engage in. And there are three fundamental activities that she probably will engage in. 
the manager knows that she has to get her unit to sell. She knows that she cannot possibly become a top manager and enjoy all the potential earnings of Tupperware or of one of our beauty businesses trying to sell everything on her own. It's not possible. You will get a lot of managers who try and perform personally because that's what they want to do, but they will not be top managers. Our top managers know that they need to get their units to sell. The people inside their units must be the ones that generate sales. Now, in order for that to happen, this top manager knows that she has to keep her unit alive. And in order to keep her unit alive, she knows she must recruit. So one of the fundamentals, one of the key fundamental actions that a top manager takes is to continue to recruit people into her unit. Because if she does not do that, she knows that her unit will lose people and eventually her unit will die. This is something that she intuitively knows through her experience. She knows she has to continually recruit people into the business. The second thing that a top manager knows, these are her fundamentals. She knows that she needs to motivate the people inside her unit in order for them to sell Tupperware each week, perhaps every week, every second week, perhaps once a month. It depends on the situation in each manager's unit. She will have people that do sell every week. She'll have people that may only sell once a month. But this manager knows that she needs to motivate them in order to continue selling. The moment you stop motivating your unit, the manager will begin to lose sales. But we're talking about the activity of a top manager. We're talking about somebody who knows what to do. And she knows that she needs to phone her unit demonstrator or consultant. She knows that she needs to SMS them. She knows that she needs to recognize them when they've achieved great sales in one particular week. She knows that she needs to reward them with a little gift, perhaps. She knows that she needs to take them for coffee. She knows that she needs to have a unit meeting and bring them into the unit meeting. She knows that she needs to say, I will meet you at the assembly on Monday. Let's get together at the assembly on Monday. Let's talk about our business. This is how the unit manager motivates the people inside her unit. She knows how to do this. So first of all, she knows she must recruit people into the unit. And secondly, she knows that she needs to keep the motivation up. These are the fundamentals. The third thing that a successful unit manager knows she must do is she needs to sell her product so that she can lead by example. So she must have personal sales. She cannot possibly lead and motivate a unit without making personal sales herself. Doesn't matter whether she's selling lipsticks or quick shakes. It doesn't matter. She needs to sell a lot of it if she's going to stand up there and she's going to say to the people, if I can do this, you can do this. They must look at her as a, what we call a credible manager. She's got to have credibility. And the only way that she can have credibility as a manager is if she sells the product herself. If she demonstrates it, if she has parties, if she has beauty spas, whichever method she is using, whatever product she is selling. The successful people must do this. So she needs to lead by example. But then, having got the success formula into our minds, there are just normal people out there who are not as disciplined as the top managers. They simply aren't. And then, of course, even though there are people that are not disciplined, there's another group of people who actually just don't know what to do. You've got managers and demonstrators and beauty consultants who don't know what to do to be successful. And this is where the success formula comes in. They need a formula for success. We always say in Tupperware or in the beauty businesses that they need to work smarter, not harder. And so our whole sales force from the consultant level, the beauty advisor, the area directors, right the way up to distributors, to be really, really successful in our business, need to focus on those essential 
essential areas that will really drive you to success, and they all need a success formula. They need a success formula so that they are able to realize their full potential and earn as much money as they possibly can. Now, the results from our pilot market of Mexico and Indonesia show that distributors who regularly follow the success formula have much higher sales growth than distributors who do not follow the success formula. This has already been tested and proven. Now let's hear right now from one of our successful Indonesian distributors. They have grown their business by using success formulas. Eni and Lucas run a very successful distributorship on the outskirts of Jakarta. They've tried many things over time to make their business successful. Some things worked, some things didn't work. But they changed the lives of them and their distributorship when they introduced success formulas. And they grew their business from around $280,000 per annum to a whopping great $5.8 million per annum by the introduction of success formulas with double digit growth year after year after year. And this is, Usher, their third chairman's summit that they are attending. Let's hear from any. Beberapa tahun yang lalu, saya selaku distributor melakukan kegiatan tanpa arah. Di sana melakukan begini, saya lakukan. Di situ melakukan begini, saya lakukan juga demi sukses. Tapi sekarang sudah ada sukses formula, saya lakukan kegiatan dengan arahan yang benar dan tepat. Saya tinggal jalankan saja setiap hari, setiap minggu, setiap bulan sesuai sukses formula yang ada. I know uh, Adam Eni is here. Uh, can we have Eni stand up, please? Happy end. Let's give her a big round of applause. Yes. Thank you. And that's a great example of a distributor who follows and ensures that a success formula is implemented at every level consultant, manager, group manager, and so on. So everybody knows what needs to be done. Now, I want to get now into group demonstration selling, which is a third part of the IROR uh, initiative. And group demonstration selling is not alien to Tupperware, because as we started our company, the first thing we began was with the Tupperware party. We call it the Tupperware party in some markets, GDS, or group demonstration selling, or in some places, we even call it the Tupperware experience, as you call it in Mexico. Now, this is all about the dynamics of people coming together, a great relationship fueled by a powerful demonstration of a product. That's really what a Tupperware experience or a GDS is. Now, the, this, has become, uh, this is really a tool for success for the markets where we've been propagating this party. In fact, as I came into the business many years ago, the first thing I learned was no one ever quits this business, if she has a date book full of Tupperware parties lined up, you just cannot quit. And great products, which we launch now, deserve to be demonstrated. Now, without the demonstration, again, it's about having a nice product that just sits pretty in a brochure and doesn't really see the light of the day. So the Vision 2020 team identified that if only we could slowly but surely have our demonstrators become more equipped and more confident such that they can pick up products and start to demonstrate them, it would start to create tremendous success. As they say, Rome was not built in a day. So we do understand that there are markets where we do have one-to-one -one selling situations, and in these situations, you typically have a nice-looking brochure our sales force walks around with a nice catalog or a brochure and show it to people. Now, when you do that, sure, you can sell some product, maybe some bottles, maybe some bowls, some storage containers can be sold. But as she starts to do that, and we train her to start to just demonstrate a product. Now, 
whether it's our beauty businesses or our Tupperware business, we all often say that through a demonstration, you unlock the magic of a product. And one of the magical products, and we had Daisy talk about beauty products this morning, but in the Tupperware space, one of the magical products that we've all seen is this chopper. And I know we call it by many names in the markets, but really, it's a fantastic product. Once demonstrated, automatically people say, wow. Now, just imagine that we train our sales force with this simple product, which I believe even a child can use. It's so easy to demonstrate. And she has this product in her bag all the time. And this means that she can actually take it out, have a few pieces of carrots, and demonstrate this product everywhere she goes. Now, slowly and steadily, as you start to build up confidence in demonstrating product, you start to feel that you can show it now to more people. So the one-to-one -one slowly starts to move towards one-to-many, and that's what we call the group demonstration selling. So think about the linkage of this onboarding program where she learns this demonstration technique, and then she's able to have the confidence to share it with more people. And she now becomes trained to do a group selling party or a group selling situation where she's confident. And then now dial it up. This morning, we, we saw the fantastic launch of the Micro Pro, and this, of course, requires a little bit more training and proficiency for the demonstrator. But again, with the technique that she starts to understand and adopt, with the confidence that she can now show and demonstrate product to more people, she can become much more culinary, and she can demonstrate these higher priced premium products with great demonstration features, and you can start to see that that positions her much more strongly, and she earns a better income. And this is really a journey, as we call it, moving from a one-to-one -one selling situation to a more culinary situation. And again, we don't say it's a revolution, that it happens overnight, but we call it an evolution. But we as distributors, our top distributors as leaders, have to drive this process. So if I have to just say one thing from this, you can actually focus as a distributor on one or two products that you really want to train your sales force with and make them experts at doing that. And make sure that they have a habit of sharing that product every week at their, uh, as they go out at their parties or their type of experiences. Now, uh, I always say the proof of the pudding is in the eating, right? So you always say, so who else, who's doing this? There are many markets in the world who actually do parties. But what's interesting is to showcase to you a country where there wasn't so many parties happening before, and it was really just the one-to-one -one selling situation. And the leadership of that country embraced this idea of saying, let's now evolve to doing more. And guess what? I'm so proud to showcase to you this group sitting here, Tupperware Mexico, who actually took that challenge on. So congratulations, Bravo, Tupperware Mexico. Mexico. Bravo to Luciano, Luciano Azum and his team for taking this challenge on. And today, we see that in Mexico, I mean, we know the results. We saw their success. Double-digit growth, uh, now year on year, rock solid. And what's driving that is a confident demonstrator who's starting to do a little bit more demonstrations uh, or parties. And party average, you see, is up 8%. Now let's start to look at one such story, which is actually fairly interesting, uh, of Teresa, who is a distributor in Mexico. And she, we're going to show you Teresa's video. But what, what I was more really impressed about was to hear that she actually is based in one of the poorest states in Mexico. And you can quite imagine, in a poor state, to dial up parties and to do group demonstration selling and to start to sell premium products should be something. But she's taken that challenge on. Now, she's embraced this GDS, or what she calls the top of experience. She's grown. 30% last year, 2015, and today her business still clocks a 25% growth. So let's hear from Teresa. Mi nombre es Teresa de Jesús Feliciano de Montesinos. Soy gerente de ventas de distribuidora turquesa. Para mí es muy importante tener penetración en el mercado de la marca 
del producto, hacer presencia siempre. Esto lo logro a través de este, las capacitaciones dentro de la distribuidora. En cada asamblea, una experiencia y si es posible hasta dos. Lo primero que hay que hacer es enseñarles a hacer experiencia. Para poderles enseñar a hacer experiencia, necesitas darles a conocer el producto el enlazamiento entre uno y otro. Es muy importante que ella sepa que van a salir al campo a ofrecer un producto con calidad, con versatilidad y funcionalidad. Es muy importante que nosotros dentro de la experiencia les vayamos generando confianza. Ellas la logran a través de ir conociendo el producto, entonces hay que irles enseñando, enseñando. Las experiencias sabemos que deben de ser simples, de, deben de ser este, replicables y sobre todo divertidas. Entonces dentro de la experiencia nosotros le podemos enseñar a los clientes, inclusive a nuestras comerciantes, a nuestros prospectos, la gran utilidad del producto. Hay que estar capacitando, eh, reforzando a la promotora experta. A veces pensamos que ya todo lo sabe. O sea, yo digo, nosotros como gerentes tenemos, jugamos un papel muy importante. Si la comerciante tiene conocimiento del producto, va con el cliente y ya tiene venta y ya tenemos actividad. Yo le diría a mis compañeras que confíen en la gente, que la gente va a salir a trabajar si le enseñamos a hacer eso. Al principio le va a costar, primero que ella esté convencida, porque esto es el, el éxito. Después que ella confíe en sus promotoras, le va a ayudar muchísimo. Y luego el último, que le llamo yo así, es extraordinario y sensacional, que confíe en el producto. So, Teresa, where are you? Can you please stand for us? Congratulations. A big round of applause. Well done. So, you've seen the three initiatives that we were talking about today, onboarding, success formula, and group demonstration selling. Where to from here? What Usher and I would like you to remember, that these initiatives were based on your success. We built this based on your best practices. This is your work. So what we would like you to do, we want you to embrace these initiatives when you leave here. We want you to own them yourselves, and we want you to run with them, because our top priority is to make you even more successful. So thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Put your hands together, warm welcome. Once again, please, our Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, coming on stage, Mr. Rick Going. Here I go again on my own. Going down the only road. Simon, will you help me for a minute? Okay, I'm in charge of the serious things in business. Simon's in charge of fun. So, So I want to, can we get this microphone on, please? What do you want me to do? Uh, I'd like you to get everybody to stand up for a moment and why get loose you, and... Why don't everyone stand up, uh, smile at each other or shake hands, or if you're a Mexican or you're a Brazilian, hug one another, right? <laughs> and shake yourself around. I can't shake too much, like this. Can you do that? Come on, everyone. Everyone. Everyone, turn the music up. Turn that music up. Clap, clap, clap. Get the energy up in this room. Do that. If I can do it, I broke and ripped, you can do it. Is that good enough? That's good. That's good. All good, right. Good, good, good. All right. Thank you, Go my friend. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. You know, as, it, as, as many different countries are, uh, as we're in, sometimes it's really confusing what to do in certain markets uh, from a cultural standpoint. I mean, uh, do you kiss one time? Do you not kiss at all? Do you kiss three times? Do you bow? Do you use your right hand or left hand? Uh, and uh, we always used to kid about Glenn Drake. 
uh, who is just doing wonderfully. No matter where Glenn was, he would always hug everybody and they always accepted it. So Simon, thank you very much for that. Okay, next section. We're gonna start talking a little bit about not only today, but the future. And when I say about today, some of the things that I'm gonna be sharing with you, I know many of the top winners last night, it's because they're doing these things. When I talk about uh, the concept of not only having a distributorship, but under distributors, building more distributorships under it, I mean, Sophie Ahmed, I know that's why you're the biggest uh, in Indonesia. Uh, and you were the reason Brazil didn't have every spot on the top 10. But if I was talking about Brazil, all of those distributorships, not only they're great distributorships, but because of their structure and locations, they have more people involved. They have more units of leadership. And so what I'm gonna be sharing is some things that I think you need to start doing now. And some of the things I'm gonna be sharing are some of the things that are down the road. But every single concept I'm going to share with you is happening somewhere in the world right now. Now we need to do it in an orderly fashion. Asha makes this point to me always so effectively. The problem with me now sharing with you a picture across the horizon, it's almost as she would talk about the shiny new toy, and the moment someone gets it, they quit playing with their old toys and want to jump to the new toy. No. That's why they, they would say, man sagt auf Deutsch, die Hauptspeise, the main course of our business, the guts, is iroar. These are other elements to take it up to the next level. And I would tell you, the examples of the people on stage last night, they're doing more of these. Maria Mohammed, you know, in Canada, why were they up on stage? They are utilizing each of these components I'm gonna share with you. So some of the structure is different. They have more locations, more leaders, repeater stations there. And all I can tell you is the best evidence is all I had to do. The litmus test is look at who was on stage last night. Why more Brazilians than Indonesians? Because the last time we met in Hawaii, was, you know, Indonesia, Brazil, about the same. Because more Brazilians are doing more of these things. And why were Sophie <laughs> and Ahmed there? Because they might as well be in Brazil because you're doing the same kinds of things. And we need more of you to wake up and do some of these things because we want you on stage. Now let me get into some things and I'm gonna go through some slides. Uh, by the way, we recognize spouses I want to, you'll hear from her later, but I'd like you to kind of join me in recognizing my spouse, Susan. Susan, please stand up. Uh, uh, hey. You know, some people might think, you know, when I watched Susan night before last up till 2.30 in the morning, studying everybody's bios so she could do the interviews. I'll bet some people wonder, wow, what do we pay Susan? Nothing. And actually, the only thing Susan gets for this 
is number one, the satisfaction because she loves this. She loves the people. She believes in it. And number two, she gets me. Uh, Simon would say that's not such a gift. Uh, So let me get on with this, though. This is an important time in the world. And you may not think it, but this is the most peaceful time the world has ever known. In the last century, 200 million people were killed by either punitive actions of governments or wars. Now, how come it doesn't feel peaceful? Because you have CNN, you have the internet, everything happening everywhere you have access to. And it's an incredible time of prosperity and health too. We show uh, sometimes at my seminars this wonderful Swedish uh, uh, statistician video that 200 years ago, the world was mostly, and all of its people, poor and sick. Average life expectancy was less than 40 years. Average income less than a dollar a day. And you've seen the whole world move up. Yes, there are still areas of issues. The average life expectancy in the year 1900, 47 years old. Now it's 78 uh, years old. Things have, it's a special time to be alive. And I think it's a very special time to be part of this organization. And I wanna talk about some of the things I talked about when I was in China and Indonesia, but quickly go through some of this. The power of now. Two big forces that will change, that are making this time even more special. A major generation shift, and that is from baby boomers, who really controlled most business, most governments, etc., for the last 50 years to now millennials. And secondly, technological innovation. I'm sitting here, Susan and I were talking when she was with ABC television about her first, I guess you'd call it car phone. But what sat in the trunk of the car was a 15 kilo box that went with a cord up to the, up to the driver's seat. Technology is absolutely amazing. And when you bring these two together, from millennials to technology, incredible things happen. Again, those born after 1980. You heard it from George this morning. They're gonna control most all jobs in the future. And it's interesting, they're more alike than there are different. In any city of the world, millennials act pretty much the way millennials do other places because of their access to culture and information. And even if you're not a millennial, and I'm not, they are influencing everything we're doing. So we better get in line with millennials because they're gonna control things. Interesting, they are different. They don't want a job, 60% don't want a job. They don't want heavy structure and be locked to a cubicle nine to five. They say, I wanna be free. They want a sense of purpose in their life. They just don't want to turn a crank. I want a feeling that I'm making a difference in the world. Most want to work for themselves. Not only do they want freedom, they want balance. Do I want a child or do I want a career? How about both, maybe? Tupperware matches their lifestyle and our businesses. It gives them these things. It makes it different for them. This is also something millennials want. Adventure, 
They want to see the world. They want to look back and say, you know, it had purpose, but boy, it was fun. I used to tell people that the way to look at life is not to end up at the grave quietly, sitting on a rocking chair, but the great old theory of to come in at a high speed, like you were in a Ferrari, skid to a stop, and look back and say, wow, what a ride. What a ride. I would rather burn out than rust out. It's a whole different attitude. But what about technology? They are really raised with it. They're digital natives. And putting these two things together, let me show how it affects millennials. It affects our business. In the past, heavy labor intensive. In the future, much more gazelle-like. What does that mean? Shift of focus to building people rather than packing boxes or filling out paperwork. People. They love technology, but this is something that people get wrong. They've said to us, well, oh, doesn't this mean Tupperware and your various companies will go out of business because everything is internet? No, it's not. We have supported the internet in our North American business for 15 years. It's 4% of our business. Millennials love technology. And a matter of fact, this is the intimacy scale, like a thermometer. Millennials use all of this. But baby boomers were very private. Millennials want intimacy. So they use Twitter, email, you know, texting. And then this is the scale from cold and impersonal on the bottom to hot on the top. They use all of these, which means millennials are much more connected. And what matters to them most, face to face, face to face. And they take care of each other. So it's a very special time. It changes our product line. You saw this morning, it's important food storage. When you consider that Europeans and Americans throw away 30% of their produce, it's interesting, food storage still matters. Matter of fact, we had a party we used to call in Germany the Rumfort party, leftovers. Because rather than throw all that food away, which is about a third of the food, we showed them how to use some of our products, a quick chef, and make things out of leftovers. So we moved from passive food storage only to dynamic products where use shows results. My goodness, when I joined the company 22 years ago, Hans Joachim Spencer, Hio Spencer, we loved him. And often when I'm in Frankfurt, I will put flowers on his grave. I remember Hio told me back then, we can never sell a product that isn't made out of a plastic resin. And they were trying to sell a slicer with a plastic blade. I said, hi, you can't keep it sharp. Now, we do everything, don't we? Nike used to just do running shoes. Now, they're the name in sports. And what this means is great opportunity. I'll talk to you about China in a little bit, how effective they are because most places in China, the water isn't fit to drink. How effective Vincent and his team have been, they sell a $1,000 water filtration system. And it is a real core 
to our distributorship's profitability. And you saw today, God, the, the pro, the first time, I've used that already. I cooked a steak in five minutes for someone. I couldn't believe it. Firstly, it debunks the old myth that you can't put metal in a microwave. Yes, you can if you know how to do it with regard to the shape. Incredible things are beginning to happen. And what's amazing about what Matthias showed you this morning, millennials love to entertain, but she doesn't want to spend eight hours preparing food. She wants it, boop, 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 but she wants the food just as good as it used to be. What does this mean? Big opportunities for us. Big opportunities, leadership opportunities for more people. That's what we're looking for. More leaders. We need, as Simon often talks, more market presence. Steinova did a beautiful presentation last year at Jubilee that showed in the U.S. lights across the United States. And it shows those lights represented places you can get Tupperware. The lights were brighter 10 years ago than they are today because our footprint changed. That was a mistake. Rather than many ships and location, we went to fewer, bigger. Wrong. Wrong. That's why today, many of the big box retailers are in trouble because people want things that are closer access to them. And you better be specific if you're just going to make big battleships. We now can sell higher priced products and that means you earn more money. I mentioned the other day, Michael Porter still teaches competitive advantage at Harvard. He's known as the world's expert. And you only gain competitive advantage one of two ways. Either differentiation or your low cost supplier. Let me be clear, we're never going to be low cost supplier. We're value for money. You go and you will see Tupperware that people, my mother has Tupperware that we had when I was little. And that's why the good news about Tupperware is it lasts forever. The bad news is it lasts forever. <laughs> Which is why 25% of our sales every single year are new products, new products. So we cast aside low cost supplier. That's not the way for permanently build a business for the future because someone will always come in and be willing to sell it cheaper until they run out of money. The number one job of leadership of a company and your responsibility is the perpetuation of, your, of the business. Perpetuation, sustainability of the business. And that's why what we showed you earlier was you, you've got to do the IROR stuff. But you've got to do new things for the future. And that's what I'm going to share with you. I have an operating principle that has guided me in my business career with regard to innovation on business models. And it's simply this, every successful business model works until it doesn't. And that's why the wolf is always at the door. And it's our responsibility to always know and be working on how can we be different? How can we change it? How can we come forward with new products, 
better ways to sell and show, better ways to demonstrate. That's the reason we're in business now and bigger than we ever were. Now, I want to take you ahead five and even 10 years. Now, I won't be here running the company then. I believe that probably we have my succession candidates are in the system right now. I want someone who replaces me to not have a five-year run. I want them to have a 10 or 15-year run because we want to see consistency. The average CEO in the world right now has been there less than four years. Churn, 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 churn. How can you live up to commitments? How can you build relationships of trust if the door is revolving for it? And I, I think we'll do a two-step that I'll become non-executive chairman of the board, but still ensure that the direction stays. And it is interesting, I don't have all the answers, but we have assembled a team that together, we're pretty good at figuring out what the right direction is. So extending our reach, let's take a look at this. Firstly, some guiding principles. This is at our core of values. Number one, our sales force will always be part of the value chain. I'm going to show you a new configuration that we're moving toward in some markets. And one thing, if anything, I want to be very clear about, this is not retail. Okay? Most retailers are in trouble today. I'm sharing this with you because we're walking across this bridge to the future together. Two, relationships are at the core of our business. Millennials don't believe advertising. Results show 85% of all ads, millennials, when they see a picture of Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, or George Clooney showing a watch, millennials are really smart. Why do you think Leonardo or Clooney is wearing the watch? They're getting paid for it. Now, my generation was gullible enough to think, Oh, I bet they love that. Yeah, they love the money they're paid. Millennials believe in authenticity. And that's why they want to know the name of a great restaurant. They don't look in a telephone book. They text to friends. Do you know the bulk of people who buy our products everywhere in the world? It's like a secret club. Strangers don't get to buy Tupperware. It was always a friend, neighbor, or a relative. And that's why we'll only sell great products. Because relationships are what matter. And I'm gonna show you a strategy for the future that will monetize and mine some of these relationships. And thirdly, you heard from Asha and Alan, demonstration, it's the key. Sure, we'll sell some products that, that, that you really can't demonstrate. I remember one year in Germany in, during birthday weeks, a beautiful new crystalline looking bowl. And I remember asking Michael Chalice, who was the head of marketing back then, I said, well, how are you going to demonstrate it? He said, we're going to put apples in it. I said, well, it, all it does is look good. And he was young in marketing then. He kept getting better and better and better. We've never made that mistake again. Demonstration is key. So let me show you the next horizon and run through this. Three things I'm going to share with you. Requisite, more leaders, 
with locations. Not sparse leadership, more leaders, more locations, a footprint replicated. You're going to see us, and we're doing this, contemporize the look and the feel of distributorships. And as a matter of fact, I'm using the word studio, and that's what you'll see us use. What happens in studios? Well, let's think about that. In the arts, studios where artists work, where recording artists record their music, where sculptors, studios also where people practice, dance, where they learn. But let me tell you, it was like the feeling this morning with George, Mattia, and Michael. Studios will be where we create leaders. And it may look to you like, oh, is this a retail thing? No. If somebody came in off the street to one of our distributorships today, would you send them away? No. If they came in to your distributorship and said, I'd like to buy Tupperware, I'll tell you what most of our distributors would do. Recruit them. (laughs) Train them. Teach them. Or put them in touch with a member of the sales organization. So when you see this facade there, I don't want you to think retail. You go in Mexico, for example, and many other markets where there's Nespresso's, that Nespresso is actually an image studio. It's not a Starbucks where you walk in and, and you have Wi-Fi and you spend at your other place. It's where they demonstrate this luxury Nespresso machine and you can sign up. Lastly, the third point, Retain the relationship equity with sales force who leave. We recruit many people every year, but because the barriers to joining are so low, the bulk we lose, but we lose them in the first three months because we microfinance them. We just did a study two years ago in Germany, 50% of the sales force that we deleted, removed, unfriended, they missed Tupperware. They didn't want to sell full or part-time, but they wanted a continuing relationship with this company. It's a company that people love. You know, often the reason they love Tupperware is they remember when they were younger in the reptilian coding of their brain when somebody took care of them, when somebody sent them to school and made their lunch. And I've talked to old people on Wall Street. When I mentioned Tupperware, they say, oh, I first remember when my mother and I hear these. You can't buy the love of that kind of relationship. And we're going to leverage it. So here's the Salesforce structure today in most places. You have a distributor or director who develops team leaders and demonstrators. But generally, it's only the distributor who has a location. The rest is invisible. This is the key for the future more leaders and more locations. And let me clarify how. This is a distributor. We're going to have under these distributorships leader owned studio ships. And we have to work on our value chain to do it. But let me tell you how well it works. 
Vincent, you're, where are you over here? Vincent Liang and the China. Where are the other people from China? Everybody stand up from China, okay? Beginning representation of Chinese. I want you to give them a big applause. Okay. Okay. Now, let me tell you, I was just there uh, last month. Please, it's okay to sit down now, but thank you. Thank you for what you do and for what you're teaching us. There was a problem in China as we opened that business in the 90s. The typical person didn't have enough room in their apartment to hold a Tupperware party. Typically, an apartment in China can be 30 square meters to 50 with three people living there. They take care of their parents. So you're sitting there in a space, this is the apartment here. So where are you gonna hold the party? So they created studios. Do you know how many we now have in China? 5,500 and the goal for the future is 20,000. So again, big applause for them. Now, I want to talk to you uh, about how they, they work it. Somebody comes in, it's her studio. It's not the distributors. She pays the rent. The average rent in China for a studio is 500 US dollars a month. Interesting. With her margin, she gets the 25 to 30 percent off, you know, that a demonstrator would make. Plus, she makes margin on top of that, that a unit or a team leader would make. When she sells a thousand dollar water filtration system, she sells two a month, it pays her rent. But notice what I just said. She sells two a month. Personal sales? Yes. They do, and they get long dollar. The typical one had to invest $20,000. And they can't, because of how it works in China, usually get it from a bank. Do you know what she does? She gets 10 relatives who each loan her $2,000. So she's got enough money for a year of overhead, but then it's her ship. But she reports to another distributorship. She's an outlet owner. Now, I don't know exactly how we're going to do this on shifting, but you're going to see more of this happen around the world, whereas I would sit there and talk to Sophie and Ahmed and say, more of these, but they're owned by the people who run them. You don't have to. It's not your rent. The largest food organization in the world with regard to outlets isn't McDonald's anymore. It's Subway. 34,000 outlets. The smallest ones are only 30 square meters. But then there's big ones too. But it's a location. And let me give you an idea. Studio ships, leader-owned locations out there. Millennials want their own business. She has invested. She has what we would say in English, skin in the game. The mini ones, 50 square meters. But I've got a video to show you what a larger one might look like. Now, this is not for everyone now. But if I turn the clock ahead five years, you will start to see Tupperware everywhere. And it will be Salesforce facing and close to where the Salesforce lives. Nora, could we run that video?
almost in a way, guys, think about this like a sports, local sports training facility where we're building leaders. Uh, now, a consumer, could they walk in? Sure, but this isn't a retail store. This is like the Nespresso. It's for demonstration. It's for engaging them. We'll connect her with a demonstrator, but it's to build that organization to make the footprint more and bigger. Small one, still works. 5,500 of these right now in China. Will this work? It's not if, maybe, might, it works. And we're like throwing a hook across the horizon and gonna pull this company the same kind of direction. And so Vincent and his team are learning things from how our regular Tupperware business works but we're learning too from our experiences in China. So you really start to see all the things start to happen inside there as a repeater station. Next, retaining, this is the third one, a relationship with the sales force who leaves. T take a typical market. Our we have the lowest turnover in our industry but it's still about 100% per year. And they still love us. Now we're gonna create a new level and we're gonna do these learning laboratories here in Europe with Austria, with Portugal, and we're gonna call these people brand ambassadors. Do they get a discount? No, but they have a relationship. I remember from when I was a young MD at Avon in Germany, how similar the holidays were. But imagine for a brand ambassador in Germany, there are products for her that we offer directly to her at Valentine's, at Easter, at graduation and Mother's Day, at back to school, at Christmas. Those are big holidays in Germany. We would service it on behalf of the distributor, but she wouldn't have to have the inventory. And the unit manager who recruited these people gets an override, and so does the distributor. But we keep them in the system. And guess what? From time to time, they come back in and they say, I want to be active, and I want to now be a leader in Tupperware. So now, because of technology, we can manage this. We can do this, and we can do this together. 80% of the business in China is brand ambassadors with no discount. So now, look at what a ship might look like. Yes, a big distributor ship, Ahmed again, Sophie, but with leader-owned studios who also have brand ambassadors, we are connected to the marketplace. So Tupperware today, pick a country, Germany, 120-some locations. Now you get a footprint like this, where there's a single distributor in Munich, where I used to live, now you would get five, a big one, plus smaller ones that are closer to the sales force out there. And so there, it really does live up to the vision that we have of Tupperware everywhere. Now, shiny new toy, but we're moving in this direction in many markets and many of the people on stage last night, they were on stage because their organization looks more like this than just a single distributorship. Now, the next piece, our purpose, I'm gonna turn it over to Nikki Decker and Tricia Stitzel. Quickly, Nikki came out of, she used I'm to travel with me. To
Nikki, come on. And she came out of our internal audit department, traveled with me doing investor relations. Then we put her in strategy. And now she really is the person that brings together all of the talent to really mind all the information and experience. Trisha, you just came back from how many years in Europe? 12. 12 years in Europe, and she has been everywhere in the business. So two more of our leaders for the future and another of our group presidents. So please welcome them both. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Rick, for that great introduction. Alan and Asha, they started us off this morning with iRoar, and Rick just shared with us how we're going to extend our reach. Now, Trisha and I are going to share about what we're doing on to really leverage our purpose. Now, why purpose? Why does purpose matter? Purpose mobilizes people. They say people will work for money, but they will die for a cause. And we know that purpose matters, and it's important. Important to everyone in this room, and it's important to millennials as well. In fact, there's studies out, this is from the Edelman Good Purpose Study, that shows that companies today, they're using purpose as a core strategy to drive their business. Changing lives is our purpose. And this purpose has been in place for more than 70 years. And we saw it last night in the videos from the families and the friends and all the ways that the lives have changed. We see this and we bring it to life each and every day in our business. And you know, we have two champions that travel the world and capture the stories of all of you and our three million sales force that are out there and bring these stories to life through our chain of confidence. And I would like for you to help me welcome Susan Picaro Goings and Eleanor Steele to the stage. Susan is our chain of confidence ambassador and Eleanor is our vice president of global communications and worldwide initiatives. Please welcome Susan and Eleanor. talking to them for the last few days, and you guys are so excited to share the stories that you've heard, right? We are, Absolutely. very much so. We'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So chainofconfidence.com. Chain of Confidence is our global purpose, and Susan and I, as, as Trisha said, have really seen this in action firsthand as we have traveled around the world, and we see it in the lives of our sales force. So we thought to get this started, we'd like to show you some of the interviews. This is just a clip of some of the interviews of the past. I think you'll see some people you know. That's right. So let's roll that video, please. Take a look. You know, in this business, they don't ask you qualification. Anybody who is enthusiastic can do it. You tend to learn from each other at every walk of life, right from the stage of a consultant. Confidence is immense. Having my own business helped me to grow in many areas like self-confidence, maturity, commitment, dedication. I know you've described yourself as a really a shy person. Has that changed since you joined Tupperware? Completely. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> so if I have fear confident today, that's Tupperware. Tupperware 하면서 정말로 저 자신의 이름을 찾고 여성의 정 자신에 대한 정체성을 찾으면서 많은 보람을 느끼면서 열심히 살아가고 있습니다. Being able to provide that financial independence for the family as well as being able to be a mum is just the optimum opportunity. It's a great job for a mum. A Tupperware is a great opportunity that you can really become a great person, change your life. Hi, I'm Susan. I'm 
meisten gefällt mir, dass man selber die Freiheit hat, vieles zu gestalten. We have many women who come to work with us and they don't know how marvelous they are. And our job is to show them they can do so much. We could talk about each individual story that we've heard over the years yeah. forever. Uh, we just love hearing what your life, how it's changed and, and what this has meant to you. But I think you interviewed some people here, some of our leaders here yesterday. Yeah, I did. I had the pleasure, the real pleasure of uh, interviewing several women and men who shared their inspiring stories. So I'd like to thank you for not going sailing or shopping or any of the fun <laughs> things. You sat down with me instead and I really appreciated it. Absolutely. So how about if I show you some pictures of the people that you met yesterday and you share with this group That's some great. of the stories and inspirational things that they told to you. I would like that very much. We started out with uh, Garlan and she's from um, South Africa from Alvarez Shalane and she shares her story to inspire others, her life story. But she loves this business because she's been so successful, she's actually been able to send her daughter to college in the United States, all the way from Swaziland. And, and she was delightful. And then earlier, I think Asha introduced you to Sara from Germany. And I interviewed both Sara and her mom, Maria, also from Germany. And Sara was born the year her mom started her Tupperware business. And now they each have their own distributorship, both very successful, sharing ideas. And as, as Christian Dorner said to me yesterday, it's the perfect example mm -hmm. of the chain of confidence, and it really is. And then Morella and her husband Ismar, who are here from Sarajevo, and they told me the most emotional story yesterday because they talked about what it's like to live in a country and to work in a country that is in the middle of civil war. And she said they actually had Tupperware parties where they would be in homes and in businesses where the windows and the doors were completely gone because of bombing. And yet, in spite of all of that, she doubled her business last year. Absolutely, absolutely. And then um, I spoke with Rose, who is from Brazil. And Rose um, just talked about the impact this business has had on her life, the, the positive impact. And also, teamwork is really important to her, and she shared a lot about that with us. And then Maria and Mohammed from Canada. And, and they were so funny because when they met, Mohammed was in college earning his master's degree. And Maria said she was too embarrassed to tell him that she sold Tupperware because she thought he might think that's not a real job. <laughs> and as she's telling me this, I thought, wait, Last year, your distributorship and your downline had $18 million in sales. Wow. This year, your goal is $24 million, and you just told me you're hoping to do $30 million. Does it seem like a real job now? <laughs> I think so. I think so. I would say so. I think she agreed with that, too. And then Georgette is so sweet, who is from Australia, from Nutramedic. She's been with them for 28 years. And she said because of the free time that she has with this job and setting your own schedule, she likes to try new and different things. So a few years ago, when she turned 40, she decided to take up Taekwondo. And she's gotten so into it that she's actually competed. She won a silver medal at the World Championships, and I think she's competing again this summer. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And then... Micaela, I think I pronounced that correctly, from Tupperware, Portugal. She's only been in the business three and a half years, and she's already here at Chairman's Summit. And she was just delightful. Wow, and then Monica and Ruben, who live in Granada, and they met as children. They actually brought a photograph. <gasps> no. They met as children at a Tupperware event because his dad had a, <laughs> and his mom had a distributorship. And their distributorship is a little bit different. I, it was really interesting because a little bit different than most other couples that I've interviewed because they both do everything. They both oh. do sales, they both do administration, shipping, whatever's needed, whoever's there and available, they do it. So it was, it was very interesting. <laughs> Can I ask all of you to stand up that I interviewed yesterday and also everyone that I've previously interviewed as well. I'd really like you to be recognized. Yeah, I know there's a lot of you out down. there. If you've ever been interviewed by Susan for right. chainofconfidence.com. Thank 
Thank you so much. Thank you. So every one of these leaders and, and all of those that were still seated have amazing stories. And it's just their lives show the true purpose of this company and that's changing lives. Definitely. Thank so you. we're going to bring Nikki and Trisha back now. I see them over here. Oh, we're, oh they're I lurking. see one, one over here. <laughs> they're lurking. I think Ladies, thank, thank you so much for all the work that you oh, do. Thank you. Great. It's oh. really incredible the way that you've been able to capture these stories and, and showcase them through the chain of confidence. And you know, the chain of confidence is really this community that we have created mm -hmm. and that is going to be amplified as we move forward. So right. Susan and Eleanor, thank you so thank much. It's truly our pleasure. Yes, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. So we are a company of stories, and Susan and Eleanor shared so many of them, uh, and there's so many videos actually on the website for all of you to see as well. But w our purpose is clear. You know, we, we know what our uh, purpose is, and you've seen this before. Our purpose is to empower women through confidence, enable financial independence, and change their lives through opportunity, support, and relationships. We know it, we live it, we get it. And we can easily speak to each other about it, right? When we start talking about life-changing stories, everyone in here could raise their hand and say, let me tell you mine, and it's amazing. But what we don't do so well is to share it with those that are outside the sales force, with those that are outside Tupperware. For example, our hosts and our consumers. We rarely lead the conversation about our life-changing opportunity. We easily speak to our consumers and our hosts about our product, about our promotions, but rarely do we lead with that life-changing opportunity. And our opportunity is more than about money. Our opportunity also has to do with what is developed from within. And what we develop from within is confidence. And there's that word again, developing confidence. But we not only develop confidence in our sales force, we develop confidence also in our consumers and our hosts. And we hear these stories from time to time. And I want to share with you a true story that happened uh, just a couple of months ago with uh, someone that we worked with on this project, in fact. And I'd like for you to meet Inshallah. And Inshallah is a busy mom. She's professional. You can see there she has two boys. And she came to work with us on this project. And she said to us, I love Tupperware. I love Tupperware. In fact, my mom had Tupperware. But I can't cook. <laughs> and so Inshallah told us how she orchestrated her entire life around not being able to cook. And you know, when I told my husband this, he said, that sounds like somebody else I know. <laughs> <laughs> but orchestrating her life around not being able to cook. She got carry out for dinner or had frozen food. She catered her dinner parties. But there's one thing that she said that really bothered her. And it was about being able to bring homemade items to school functions. Time to time, moms are asked to bring in the cookies or the cupcakes. And she described for us what I'd have to call the walk of shame. The walk of shame. And I see some of the moms kind of nodding out there, right? <laughs> the walk of shame of taking the store-bought cake into the bake sale. And she said, I felt those other moms were looking at me and judging me, and it was terrible. So we uh, were onboarding her to our project. And we, of course, had her attend a party. And at the party, we made beer bread recipe in the Ultra Pro.
And just like all of our other hosts and consumers, she saw how quick, simple, and easy and delicious it was. And she was amazed because after years of failure, she learned, I can cook. I can cook with Tupperware. And she was so impressed. So we sent her home with the recipe and the Ultra Pro. She comes back two weeks later and we say, do you make the recipe? Yes. I not only made it for my family, but I made it for the bake sale. And she described how when she took that bread into the school with her two boys, she triumphantly walked that bread <laughs> into the school and put it on the table. And you know, if I could sum up all of that in one word, it would be confidence. We bring confidence to our sales force, but we also bring confidence to cooks. And that's the beauty of Tupperware. And these are the things about purpose that we get in our sales force, but we don't talk about nearly enough because we do change lives each and every day for our sales force, for our hosts, and our consumers. So what do companies that are purposeful have in common? There's four key attributes that they have in common. They have business models that create meaningful change. They have passionate leaders who inspire others to act. Iconic brands that stand the test of time, and they speak with one voice, one message, and one focus. So how does Tupperware brand stand up against these four attributes? Do we have business models that create meaningful change? What do you think? Check. Yes? See. <laughs> How about passionate leaders? Do we have any passionate leaders in this room that inspire others to act? Any leaders? Check. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> and our brands. We have iconic brands. Some of the most iconic brands in the world. But speaking with one voice, one message, and one focus, we do have a powerful opportunity here to remain relevant today and to grow in the future, we must unify our image and our message to be simple, consistent, and scalable. And we need to be true to who we are. And just like people, brands, they have personalities. And we used all of this and our purpose to refresh our brand identity. So we wanna show you a vid video now that really describes our brand and our brand's personalities. Let's take a look. We are surprising. Tupperware brings a sense of wonder and delight to every day. We make cooking astonishingly easy. We make moments remarkably beautiful. And we even give people the space to surprise and inspire themselves. We aren't afraid to leave a smile on your face. We are radiant. True confidence has an undeniable glow. Tupperware is colorful, bright, energetic, and vibrant. From products that color your kitchen to opportunities that help you shine. We make it our business to infuse every day with a spark of optimism ultimately inspiring others to do the same. We are helpful. At Tupperware, we empower women to be their best selves every day and in so many ways. We're eager to share, quick to lend an ear, and generous with our time and our spirit. We understand others and empathize. And we aren't afraid to step up to a challenge. We are real. At Tupperware, we've succeeded by being exactly ourselves. And the same is true for every woman, associate, and community that we've touched. Genuine relationships are the soul of our company. And we have a sense of authenticity that comes with a history steeped in confidence and celebration. So, 
Our personality traits, we are radiant, we are helpful, we are real, and we are surprising. Sound like us? We thought so too. You know, these are traits that we're going to use internally. In fact, you won't see that we share these with the public in any significant way, but we wanted to share them with you as our business partners so that you understood the strategy behind the communications that we're going to create. And we're gonna use these to create new messaging. And this messaging, such as different videos, short clips, different things that you can use on your social media and forward them to your sales force, to your consumers, and also your hosts. And the other thing that we have done is to create what we call the Book of Confidence. And tonight, in your room, you will find the Book of Confidence. This is the initial book that we have created in English, which describes the traits that we talked about. And there's also some of our stories in there. But what we're doing is that every single market will create their own book of confidence. And it will not have our stories, but it will have your stories. And this is also something that you're gonna be able to share with your community so that you can begin to talk about our traits and help people to understand what we're all about. Now, if we have these traits, but we're not able to speak about them publicly to the consumers, how will we share this brand identity? Well, this is something called the brand signature. And a brand signature, I'll just give you an example, for Nike is just do it, right? We all know that. But for Tupperware, what will be our brand signature? Well, we're very proud to launch to you today for the very first time anywhere in the world, our new brand signature. Video, please. Brand signature is a public expression of a company's brand promise and mission. For Tupperware, we knew the signature needed to be aspirational, ownable, and stretchy, yet credible. We wanted to find a signature that honored our past while pushing us to grow. We all know that true confidence comes from the feeling of being both supported and understood. Tupperware empowers people to be their very best, giving them the faith to move forward with the conviction that someone's got their back. This story inspired our new brand signature. Tupperware, confidence becomes you. This phrase positions Tupperware as a helping hand when women are busy being their best. Confidence becomes you. It looks good on you. It suits you. Quite simply, it's a compliment to anyone who reads it, whether they believe it about themselves or not. Let's break it down. Confidence is a powerful human attribute. It transcends age, generations, culture, and language. There is so much white space around this concept, and at Tupperware, we've been circling around it for years. Now is the time to claim it. Becomes also implies the journey to feeling confident, which reflects the journey that many experience when they interact with our brand. Whether it's learning something new through our products or parties, or the life-changing moments many of our sales force experience. You. Here, we are speaking directly to the world at large, which is powerful, personal, and engaging. This final address appeals to internal stakeholders, external stakeholders, and the global community all at once. Tupperware. Confidence becomes you. Confidence becomes you. That's our new brand signature. 
And confidence becomes you together with our chain of confidence, which is our community around the world of all these stories that we're going to amplify and build and grow stronger, not only with Salesforce stories, but with stories from our hosts and our consumers. And this is the power of our purpose that we're gonna bring to our brand and speak with one voice to the world about. And now there's no better ambassador for Confidence Becomes You than our chairman and CEO who travels around the world developing confidence in people all over. Please welcome back to the stage, Rick Goings. Here I go again. This also, the Tupperware Brands logo, that's what the new logo is for the company, and we're gonna use it everywhere on it. And, but this confidence becomes you, I think are fabulous, because it speaks to all of the communities, from consumers uh, to those of us building businesses in Tupperware. We've been doing this research for two years with Georgetown University, on the whole subject of confidence. And let me tell you a couple things we learned. One of the steps that we learned in this study of confidence is to have the ability to disempower failure. Let me explain. In certain sports out there, golf, for example, one person out of 150 wins every week. Everybody loses, except one. And yet, it's a career people aspire to. I've seen wonderful charts that show to become a professional soccer, football player, the number of high school students who actually become it, and you see a couple, and they made them orange, and you, you can't even see the color because almost nobody can, but still they love the sport. Disempowering failure means to give people the chance to go out there and try to succeed, and it's not going to be great every time. You saw in my opening video, I couldn't sell encyclopedias, never sold a set. And yet I grew more confident because I disempowered failure. I want you to be thinking about that too and as you're working with people in the future. So it's almost like shedding away, like someone trying to lose weight, to shed the pounds away to shed the shame of failure. It's part of every success. The other big thing we learned at Georgetown is that confidence just doesn't happen to someone. It's a result of things that people do. And so when they do something, the byproduct then becomes confidence and they say, I can do that. And that's why small wins matter. This is a milestone, us coming forward after more than 60 years with this signature, confidence becomes you. It was always part of us. Now, as the video said, we are going to own it. Confidence becomes you. No better way, though, than to put it all together, and we're gonna be wrapping this meeting up in a second, but we developed a video called the Confidence Manifesto that kind of distills it down, and everyone in this are Tupperware people. You might recognize you in it. None of these are actors our confidence manifesto. Nora, please run the tape. 
Look closely, and you'll find me. On the journey between can't and will, between never and definitely, between who you are and who you want to be. You'll find me at home, bringing courage to cooks and colorful fun to their kitchens. You'll meet me at work, helping women everywhere create a new day for themselves and their families. You'll see me in your community, leading by example and helping others dream and do. And once you've met me, you'll never forget me. You can't buy me or sell me, but you don't need to. I already live in you because I am confidence and I am yours to own. Confidence becomes you. Okay. Now, as we draw to a close, we're going to be together this evening, but, uh, and I hope you have some fun things planned this afternoon. Simon has planned an unfun afternoon for most of the managing directors. Uh, but, before we do it, I don't want this just to end. I talked to some of the MDs and we sent out something with regard to a challenge going forward. Uh, and the challenge was really inspire me and three challenge. And what we want to do is for everyone here who already qualified, we want you to remember this, but we want you to pass it on, repeater station. So, Nikki, would you show what we're giving uh, everybody in Absolutely. part one? So everyone in here, as Rick said, it's all about leadership development. So everyone tonight, when you go back in your room, for each qualifier, you'll find one black box. For the women qualifiers, it's a sterling silver charm bracelet, and I have my lovely assistants here modeling. For our male qualifiers, it's a leather bracelet designed right here in Spain. These are neat, it just goes on like this. Okay, but we don't want it to stop there. By the way, the ones we're giving you are, are really, uh, they're sterling silver. For, for the women in here, they're just beautiful. But we want you to go back there and inspire three others. And Nikki, you might share how this is gonna work. Will do, thanks. So when also in your room, you'll find three red boxes. Now these boxes contain costume jewelry, costume jewelry replica of the bracelets that the females will receive. We want you to go back home, share your amazing stories with your teams, and select three leaders in your organization that you want to help grow up to the next career level this year. Tell them about it. Share with them this bracelet and work with them to promote up to the next level. When, you do when they do promote up in 2016, the qualifier and you will both receive this beautiful charm that's been designed by Susan Baccaro Goings that really shows another link in the chain of confidence. So you'll both be able to add this charm when they promote up to your bracelet. Wonderful. Thank okay. you. Okay, Nikki, thank you very much. Trish, thank you. Guys, let me use the clicker. Okay, guys. Alan, we didn't get you to walk around the room in, as a hand model. Oh, you did? Okay.
Guys, well, uh, let's wrap up this, this morning, though. I've got a charge, a challenge for you. Firstly, let me tell you, we're going to announce uh, tonight where we're going in two years. Uh, I do want to tell you that one of the things I want to see us do, uh, I want to see us, we've limited this always to the 500 here, okay? We have decided because of the location we have selected, we ought to try to just open it up to a thousand in two years. So more about that, more about that tonight, okay? All right. Now. There are three things I want to leave you with. This is what we would call the so what. This is the expectation for each of us as leaders is to grow. There's an old saying that when I cease to grow, I begin to die. Growth is requisite in these businesses. And that's why we've even started the way we did recognition on stage. It was the top growth that was up here on stage. Yes, just like someone can be nominated for an Academy Award, but only a few get one, actually. We're looking for growth. And that's why the Inspire Me in Three talks about us replicating ourselves. It talks about the light we leave behind by spreading it. Grow. Two, there's no way to grow unless we share with other people, and it's recruit. It's the number one thing Simon and I will look for when we're looking at the details of a country. We will say, size of sales force? What percentage of new recruits are coming in to the business? Third, you heard it this morning with IROR, and then you heard it from me, repeater stations. That's one of the reasons this is, we haven't had China before here. And actually you're gonna see some different recognition in two years because 5,500 and more already there. And I will tell you, Ash and I, during one of the days we were there, we listened to story after story of testimonials and what the stories were about is people developing leadership. The stories were about individuals who got their own studio, but what they really did, they became big distributors because they shared it with five others, because that's what you have to do to get to the next level. So it was developing leadership. That is the key. And the last thing I would ask you, we got another month left in this quarter. Let's make it sizzle and do something with it and not take a break so it's a weak end. Let's make it a strong end to this quarter. Okay, guys, I'll see you tonight. Look forward to great fun this evening. Thank you for your time today.